As we get into the second half of the 1930s, we see an increasingly aggressive Nazi Germany. In 1935, they publicly announce their intent to rearm their military. The reason why this is significant is not that they were all of a sudden building their military. They, in fact, were doing this as soon as they had taken power in 1933. But now they felt confident enough to publicly state their intention, which is another way of publicly, of publicly stating that they could care less about the Treaty of Versailles, which had said that Germany was limited to a 100,000 soldier military. Then we get into 1936. 1936, you might remember, another term of the Treaty of Versailles was that Germany was not allowed to occupy the Rhineland, this area in yellow right over here. And then that was actually reaffirmed in 1925 by the Treaties of Locarno, where Germany itself agreed to not occupy the Rhineland. But by 1936, Hitler decides to ignore all of those and occupies the Rhineland occupies the Rhineland. But once again, the Allies, the French, are not so happy about this, but the, but the UK in particular, once again, not, not super happy about this, but they decide that this is not reason to potentially start another war over, so they really don't push back on Germany. Then we get into 1938. 1938, and German aggression really goes into full gear. In March, in March of 1938, you have a, a, a coup d'etat orchestrated by the Nazis in Austria that really overthrows the, the, the Austrian government and allows the Germans to unify the two countries. So you have the Germans come into Austria, really a, a bloodless takeover, and there, is, uh, there, there was already popular support for the Nazis in Austria. There was a Nazi party in Austria. There had been popular sentiment for, for many years amongst many Austrians to possibly be unified with the Germans. Austria is fundamentally a German-speaking nation. And so in March, this actually happens, this Anschluss, this Anschluss, or unification. And if you remember, that was also another forbidden term of the Treaty of Versailles. So now the Germans are pretty much ignoring the Treaty of Versailles and the Treaty of Saint Germain, which was the equivalent of the Treaty of Versailles, but with the Austrians. So you have a unification of Germany and Austria. Then, as we get into late 1938, in September in particular, Hitler and the German and the Nazis are interested in 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 bringing the German speaking populations of Czechoslovakia under German control. And this region right over here in Magenta, this is where you have you have large populations of German speakers. These regions are collectively referred to as the Sudetenland. Sudeten Sudetenland. And really just continuing the policy of not wanting to rock the boat with Germany, you have France, Great Britain, and Italy agreeing. And Italy was an, was an ally of, of the Germans. But France and Great Britain in particular are not interested in rocking the boat with the Germans. And so in September of 1938, they signed the Munich Agreement. The Munich Agreement, which did not actually where they actually did not consult the Czechoslovakian government, where they allowed Germany to take over this region right over here, the Sudetenland. And that, frankly, with the Germans taking over this, this significant part of the, the population of Czechoslovakia, a significant part of the industrial capacity of Czechoslovakia, this eventually leads to early 1939, early 1939, where all of what we would now consider the Czech Republic, the, 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 this area right over here, all over this, becomes a protectorate of Germany. So they, they call it the, the protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. So Bohemia and Moravia go to Germany. And Moravia. And so this is 19... 39. So as, as we get into early 1939, you see this repeated pattern over the last four years. Nazi Germany ignoring the Treaty of Versailles by rearming, by occupying the Rhine, Rhineland, 
by unifying with Austria. Now they're expanding their territory. They, they are actively allowed to take over the German-speaking areas of Czechoslovakia under the Munich Agreement. And eventually they are able to take over Bohemia and Moravia, all of kind of the, what we would currently call the Czech Republic. And this general pattern of German aggression followed by the other powers in Europe essentially allowing it to happen, in particular Great Britain allowing it to happen, has been referred to as a policy of appeasement. Obviously, the word appeasement means if you, there's someone who's angry about something and you just don't want to make them any angrier, you just let them do whatever they want. This is essentially what was happening over here. And in hindsight, it might be easy to say, hey, look, they were allowing Germany to take over more and more, to become more and more aggressive, which made it more and more confident. And this would eventually lead to World War II. But at the time, you do have to remember, the, 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 everyone still had a very strong memory of what had happened in World War I. And no one was interested in starting another pan-Europe war. And so even in, in, in hindsight, it's easy to... To, uh, to say that the, the British, in particular Neville Chamberlain, who was the prime minister from 1937 on, uh, were weak and allowed German, the, the Hitler to, to gain confidence, which eventually, allowed to, uh, which eventually led to the Nazi invasion of Poland at the end of, in the fall of 1939. But it's, easier, it's easy to say that in hindsight. But what we see as we get into 1939 is a aggressive Germany, a Germany that's not being checked by the other powers of Europe. And this is what eventually leads to September of 1939, where actually the Germans and the Soviets agree to partition Poland into their own spheres of influences, which allows Germany to invade Poland in early September 1939, which is, you could kind of say, the straw that broke the camel's back and is the beginning of, so Poland invasion, invasion of Poland, which is the beginning of World War II.